When we throw a pee ball in water, it can either bounce or dive. But in all cases, it generates waves at the surface which move away from the impact. We call them water waves. In the movie, three needles go through the water surface in a rotating tank. We observe that standing waves appear in front of each needle, provided its distance to the center is large enough. We also observe that the wavelength of the pattern decreases when the distance increases. As far as applications are concerned, among other examples, capillary waves are used by insects that live at the water surface for echolocation. They are also involved in surface force microscopy when probing liquid surfaces. When we perturb the water surface, we generate waves. What I would like to discuss is some property of these waves. First, I would imagine current of water with the velocity u not perturbed. And then I put a perturbation like the one we saw in the movie. This perturbation generate waves that I characterize by a wavelength that I call lambda. I know from the movie three things. The first one is that for a velocity larger than the critical velocity that we will discuss, we observe standing wave. And those standing waves are such that when the velocity increases, that is when I move far from the center of the rotating tank, lambda decreases. This is an observation that we have done. The second thing is that below a critical velocity, which is closer to the center of the tank, we do not observe any standing wave. No standing waves. And the last thing is that when we look at the transition from no wave to waves, we can measure on the experiment that this critical velocity is of the order of 20 centimeters per second. So these are the three properties that I want to discuss with the model. To discuss this property of capillary waves, we're going to simplify a little bit the shape of the wave and take a sawtooth type of wave, like this. And for this sawtooth type of wave, we will find again the wavelength. We will call this the amplitude and the transverse direction B. The question we want to address is what is the propagating velocity of such wave? This is the question we want to address. As always with waves, this propagation velocity will result from a balance between a potential energy and a kinetic energy. And we will have a transfer of potential to kinetics. And this balance will give us an expression for the velocity. And so we have to express first what is the uh, potential energy that we get when we perturb the interface, and then the kinetic energy. And by balancing the two, we will get the velocity. So we will first start by the potential energy. So this potential energy is related to the fact that when we perturb the surface, there is more interface that at rest. And so we store some energy into the surface deformation. If we look at uh, the sawtooth configuration, and we call this length L, then the excess of surface compared to the uh, horizontal state goes like L minus lambda over 2 times the transverse direction B, and we have 2, a factor of 2, because we have two sides here. Now we need to express this uh, length excess, and so we use Pythagora in this pink uh, triangle and get that the length square is equal to lambda over 2 square plus a square to deduce the expression that we are looking for, L minus lambda over 2, that will go like the amplitude square divided by lambda. 
So when we put these two information together, then we get the expression of the potential energy that we are looking for, that we go like gamma a squared time b divided by lambda. This is the first brick that we need in order to get the expression of the velocity of propagation of capillary waves. The second one is the kinetic energy, which is going to go like the mass times the velocity square. So the mass is the mass that is put into motion. So it goes like rho lambda square b. Here we uh, use the information that the perturbation extends into the liquid over a length scale lambda. And the characteristic velocity is a omega square. So using these two expressions, then we can balance them and say that they will be during the wave propagation an exchange of uh, surface energy into kinetic energy. And this allows us to find that C, that goes like lambda omega, is simply square root of gamma divided by the density times lambda. So this is our scaling law evaluation of capillary wave propagation. So the velocity of those waves goes like square root of surface tension divided by density times wavelength. And with this result, we can understand the first property that we have underlined. That is that when the velocity increases, when we move far from the center of the rotating tank, the wavelength that can sustain this velocity are smaller and smaller. So as u increase, lambda decrease. So there are in fact two types of water waves capillary waves that we have just described, and gravity waves that we are going to describe. So for gravity waves, we will have also a balance between a potential energy and a kinetic energy. So the interchange of these two energy will lead to the velocity of propagation. But the expression of the potential energy due to gravity is a little bit different. So for gravity, we have a term that goes like mgz, m being the mass which has been put over the equilibrium. So here it's the density times lambda times a times b. So this is mg, and the uh, increase of height is of the order of a. So we have this evaluation for the potential uh, energy due to gravity. We know that the kinetic energy in the wave will go like m v square, so the mass is rho lambda square times b times a omega square. So this is the same expression as the one we use for capillary waves. And the balance between the two leads you to the velocity of propagation of gravitational waves that goes like the square root of g times lambda. And I recall that the one that we had for capillary waves was square root of gamma divided by rho lambda. So the dependency of the velocity of capillary waves and gravitational waves is different as far as they uh, link to the wavelength is concerned. So this can be made clear on the following plot, where we are going to represent the velocity of propagation of the wave in centimeters per second as a function of the wavelength in millimeter. The first relationship so that we have obtained had to do with capillary waves. And this one tells us that the velocity goes like 1 over the square root of lambda. This is the yellow part, capillary waves. The second one is the pink one that we have obtained for gravitational waves. And it goes like square root of lambda. In fact, the wave that we are going to produce are either one or the other. And so we will have this type of relationship for the general waves at the surface of water. And this sum, which is uh, to say that the water waves are the results of both capillary wave plus gravitational waves, present a particular property, which is to have a minimum. This minimum is obtained for a lambda equal to 2 pi times the capillary length, which is 17 millimeters. And it also have a minimum velocity here, which is the one that we have observed in the experiment, uc, that goes like 4 times gamma times g divided by rho to the power 1 fourth. And this is equal to 23 centimeters per second. And now we understand that indeed, at the surface of water, 
below 23 centimeters per second, we cannot find waves. And the critical velocity below which this happens is this one. It only depends on surface tension, the gravity field of the planet on which we work, the density, and that's it. To the power one fourth, this gives us the uh, critical velocity. A rectangular vessel filled with mineral oil 10 centimeters wide is shaken vertically at 100 hertz with an increasing amplitude when the vertical acceleration of the container reaches a threshold value corresponding to four to five times the acceleration of gravity, a pattern of standing capillary waves appears at the interface. The liquid surface oscillates at a frequency which is exactly half of that of the excitation, as revealed by the quasi-steady pattern recorded at 50 hertz by the camera. This phenomenon was described for the first time by Michael Faraday in 1831. The wavelength of the pattern, 4 mm here, is fixed by the dispersion relation of capillary gravity waves. When a drop is deposited on a bath of the same liquid, minimization of interfacial energy leads naturally to the coalescence of the drop with the bath. However, when the bath is vibrated vertically, coalescence can be suppressed if the frequency of oscillation is such that the film of air separating the drop from the bath does not have enough time to drain. Here, a millimetric droplet of viscous silicone oil is kept in a stable bouncing state. Capillary waves are excited on the surface by the impact of the drop, and several drops bouncing simultaneously can be coupled by the waves. A square array of 25 drops oscillating in antiphase can thus be assembled as long as the container vibrates. Liquid drops bouncing on a vertically vibrated liquid bath start to move horizontally when the amplitude of vibration is large enough. The drop bounces slightly off the center of the wave pattern created by its own impact. The slope of the surface gives a forward momentum to the drop, which moves sideways in addition to its vertical oscillatory motion. The walker made of the drop and its associated wave, locked in phase, is a particle wave system exhibiting some remarkable characteristics, such as the quantization of orbits, as we see when two walkers interact attractively. Yeah.